There we go. I think it's okay now. Very happy to have you tonight once more. And we announce meetings. Uh, in, all in the Lord's will. The Lord be now come. All week again from 7 to 8. So you're welcome uh, to come again. And if you know friends that would be interested to hear the gospel message, good news, how to get to heaven, please bring them along with you. We'd be happy to have them with us. So for a first reading, please, let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. John's Gospel, chapter 3. John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 16. We sang about it. The Lord Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. 1 John, please, chapter 2. 1 John, chapter 2, by the end of your Bible. 1 John, chapter 2. We'll read from verse 1 to know who John writes about. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. But also for the sins of the whole world. Deuteronomy, please, chapter 32. Deuteronomy, chapter 32, please. The fifth book of your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 28. The Lord says concerning Israel, and it can easily be applied to every one of us. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. And the Lord will give us the reason here. Verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. That they would consider their latter end. And for a last reading, please come back in the Gospel of John, chapter 3 again. John's Gospel, chapter 3. Verse 35 we read. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's all I wish to read from God's word, and we pray that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word. At the start of this meeting, dear friend tonight, uh, I, I like to make it clear why we have those meetings. Before I go any further, once more, why those meetings? And why do we say that we need to be saved? Now, concerning the, ver the first verse that we read together, dear friends, tonight in the meeting, the Lord Jesus says, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, friend, I would like to stop here and ask you for a moment. I would like to reason with you, or we would like to reason with what the Lord Jesus said here. Let's reason with that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, dear friend, tonight in the meeting, why? Let us reason why God would give his son for the whole world. If the whole world, meaning every one of us, we were not lost. Why would God give his only begotten son to save us? For God so loved the world, every one of us, if it would not be needed. So, dear friend, tonight, the reasoning behind this is very simple. Yes, God so loved us, the whole world. He gave His only begotten Son. It's a fact. It's proven beyond any shadow of a doubt. But why? Because, dear friend, tonight in the meeting, the whole world is lost. Simple as that. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And for God to do such, such was the need. The whole world was lost to Him because of sin, dear friend, tonight. Now, we come to 1 John chapter 2. I'll come back to John 3.16. But well, 1 John chapter 2, something very interesting about the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what it says. And He is, the Lord Jesus Christ, the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Why is that, dear friend, tonight in the meeting? Why would the Lord Jesus be the propitiation for the sins of the whole world? It goes back to John 3.16, isn't it? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Why? Because the whole world was lost to Him. Because of sin. So God sent His beloved Son, the sinless one, the righteous one, to come here, to walk among men, and to make God known unto us His love, His kindness, His mercy. Not only that, to prove His love. How? The Lord Jesus walked even up to Calvary. And there, as we already heard in the past days, He gave His hands and feet to be pierced on the cross. And there God punished His Son for our sins. The sins, the sins of the bad people only? The sins of the adulterers only? The sins of the drunkards only? The sins of the children's abusers only? No, oh, dear friend, tonight in the meeting, for the sins of the whole world, for every one of us, needed our sins to be washed away. Forgiven. I get this quite clearly from those two passages. Now, dear friend, tonight in the meeting, you may wonder, well then, uh, if the Lord, if He's the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, 
but also for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, the whole world's sins must be taken care of. Is it so? It's not so. Let's not make the mistake here, friend, tonight. And uh, may God uh, make it clear for you. Dear friend, tonight in the meeting, provision has been made for the whole.